Welcome into the Fan Addict Sports Channel for sports fans by sports fans. It's your boy Coach I with all my dogs at. Today we're going to do a Georgia season preview. I got my special guest in here. Special guest because he's a classmate of mine back in Georgia when Georgia actually utilized talent at the tight end spot. He was one of the premier dudes on our team. Welcome in, Mr. Javar Johnson. What's going on, Jay? Hey, man. Welcome. I appreciate it. I'm glad to be here. Hey, man, let's get into it, man. Talk about these dogs. Let's, let's get the hot topic out the way first. We got Eric Gilbert, who wasn't a part of the scrimmage yesterday. They say he got some personal issues going on. What you, uh, what, what's, what's your mindset on there? I mean, uh, this guy can be a real factor for us if he's paying out. This gentleman is a tremendous talent. Uh, anybody who goes from uh, literally having his position classified as tight end to transfer into a school and they list him as the ex receiver. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I've seen him, I've seen him, you know, just up close in high school, you know, in training. And the guy's a tremendous talent. I think that he could definitely be an X factor for us, but I don't know. I don't know what this latest uh, bout is. I'm kind of, you know, wait like everybody else to see, you know, how it's going to pan out. Yeah, I know in the uh, press conference afterwards, Kirby said that Ron Corson was good at things like this, and I'm assuming it has to do with mental health or things of that nature. Uh, I just wish him well if it is like a mental health issue. Hopefully it, it ain't nothing beyond that, you know, nothing like no disciplinary action or nothing like that because that dude can be a force on the field. And it's uh, it'll help us much less help him, you know, um, because if he sits out Indeed. another season, you know, that won't be – that won't be good for his future. So, but uh, other than him, we're going to talk about some position groups. Let's start out with the quarterback. So we all know QB1 is, is JT Daniels. Right. Springtime, Carson Beck was out there, got most of the snaps at QB2. And then, of course, we got Stetson Bennett. And then, you know, for people that's always fawning over, over the star ratings, they all clamoring for Brock Vandergriff. I'm not saying that Brock is not good, but I'm not one to only look at star ratings. I actually mm -hmm. watched Carson Beck in high school. Carson Beck is that dude. Like he really, he wanted the highest classification in Florida, which we all know Florida got a lot of talent. So mm -hmm. what are you thinking on this backup spot? Because we always want injury away from needing the backup. We are. We are. I mean, as you um, you can see from some of our prior years, man, it's uh, a quality backup guy is detrimentally important, especially in the SEC. I mean, with the speed, the size of these guys, you know, you're going to have a nick or something that goes down during the season. you got to have somebody capable to be able to come in and perform. Now, I, you know, I, I don't be honest. I never follow recruiting Yeah, because I'm a big, you know, show me guy. Um, you could be a five star and not play really a down, and you can be a two or three star because Georgia ain't gonna bring in a one star, right? Yeah, <laughs> they're gonna barely bring in a two star, but you could be a you know a three star and go in there and light the world on fire because I've seen it too many times. You know, got some really good homeboys who I played with who realistically they wouldn't have been on anybody's star radar, but they went to Georgia and did their thing. Yeah, so, so, you know, I, when it comes to the backup. Um, I think that I've seen the most, if you talk about what I've been able to see with my own eyes, um, not in high school, but just from maybe going to a practice or, you know, G days out of Carson Beck. Um, and, you know, I, I, I just need somebody to be adequate there. Yeah. You know, I think JT Daniels is going to be able to tote the mail enough for us this year to make us a true contender. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, and, and, and if you're really talking about an adequate backup, I mean, stats are still sitting there. All we need him to do is, you know, a series or two, or at, at minimum, maybe a game. But he's he, realistically not a starter, not somebody who I would say, okay, I want to go into this to the season with this guy and have yeah. him play all year long. But he's, an, I think, he would be an adequate back backup, and his experience that he got when he was a starter only strengths is that position. So either one of those two, I'm okay yeah. with. Okay, that's what's up because uh, I think like you, JT Daniels is kind of what we've been waiting for. You know, not to, not to take nothing from Jake from um, Eason got hurt and we all know the Justin Fields situation. I mean, we wish it could have worked out, but it didn't. 
And uh, mm-hmm. I think Stenson is good, you know, uh, when we're not playing the Clemsons and Ohio States and the Alabamas. When we get ready to play them, yeah. then you need the JT Daniel and the experience. So <laughs> quarterback, though, we seem to be pretty set. Everybody know what to expect. Mm-hmm. As long as no injury comes, we should be good. Moving on to the running back situation. We got loads of talent in that running back room. Now, I think I've ta- I can talk to a Georgia fan each day, and everybody, they they prefer a different running back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> we that. like them all, but everybody got their preference. Uh, I think this year we'll get to see at least, I don't know if he's going to be number one running back coming out of high school, Zeus, but I think we're going to get to see Zamir like, fully like in his element because – he had the two ACL injuries, you know what I'm saying? And I know mm-hmm. I ain't never had no ACL injury, but just watching athletes that play on that level, it normally takes about 18 months. So <laughs> I was talking to him all while. I was like, he had two. So that's three years of recovery time, mm-hmm. mentally and physically. And this is the third, this is after the third year. So I think we're really gonna see from Zamir what he is fully capable of this year. But with that said, my preference. It's Kenny McIntosh. <laughs> you like you like uh, Kenny. I like Kenny McIntosh because Kenny, for me, is the most well-rounded back. I ain't gonna say he's the best back. He's the most well-rounded back. Like he can catch like James Cook, maybe not on James Cook level, but he can catch almost as good as James Cook, and he can run between the tackles. He ain't Zeus, but he but but Zeus and Kendall Milton can't catch like Kenny McIntosh. And Kenny McIntosh, I feel has the best vision. So who's your preference back there? Regardless of who we start or play, it don't really matter, I don't think. Well, I'll tell you, man, you, so you're right. Uh, uh, one of my partner always says this, partners, they always say this, they say, hey, man, this is an embarrassment of riches. Really? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, and it's kind of what we used to, though, to be honest with you. And um, I, I'm kind of on, on the on a similar trajectory as you, I mean, I'm looking at the fact that Zeus, <clears throat> Zamir, man, he, um, to me, he had a run last year that showed me realistically what he should be every single down. It was like close to the goal line. He had like two cutbacks um, in a small space, an amount of space um, to be and be able to take it in for the touchdown, almost untouched. Uh, but I also saw him be a little tentative yep. for the person that they say that he has been, right? Because I, again, I ain't, I'm not watching any, um, well, I'm not really watching highlight yep. films. I'm not doing all that from high school, right? Show me when you put the G on what you got to offer. Exactly. Me. And um, I really like, I, I really like Kenny Milton too. I really like that kid. I think that he is shifty. He, a bit, he ain't no little back either. My man is 6'1". <laughs> You know what I'm saying? 215, 220. He's not a small guy. He kind of has a build, maybe not as not as wide and as muscular, but like girl. Yeah. And so, you know, I really like him. I really like what I've seen from him when he got into the game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think all these backs have a little something um, that, different that they can show. But if you're asking me for my one and two, I'm going to say I want Zeus to be Zeus. Okay. So I'm going to cheer for him to be that number one bell cowish back that can be as bell cow of a back <laughs> when you have five other backs that can start in the SEC. Bruh. So I'm going him at number one, Zamir Zeus. I'm going Kenny at number two, and then I'm going to go James Cook at number three. Yeah. Um, really, I'm going to go James Cook and maybe like a 2B yeah. because I really love this guy's talent on the field. I don't know realistically what it has been that hasn't allowed him to be able to flourish like a Georgia back yeah. fan, but this is his senior year. So I'm really room for him to have a huge year, be it out of the backfield, be it, you know what I'm saying, in a slot situation, be it motions out the backfield. I'm really looking for him to have a big year because he has size, he has speed. Man, as a receiver, that man is as dangerous as any back in the any country. Any back, any back. I and mean, we saw that against Alabama last year when he when he it, motioned out wide and they sent the linebacker with him. I was like, oh, that's six. <laughs> to- toasted him. 
Yeah, you got to scrape that toes when he got yeah, there with it. Yeah, for real, for real. And uh, we'll, later mm -hmm. on, we'll talk about coaching, and I'll get into why I think James Cook hasn't been able to fully flourish. I'm not not that they was holding him back, but just some philosophies and things of that nature. So, yeah. Indeed. So on to the pass catchers. We're going to just talk about the tight ends and the wide receivers alike because, as we said earlier, Eric Gearbook can – I mean, when you're good enough to play tight end and then be then switch over to the X receiver, uh, that's a lot of ability right there. So hopefully we we'll get him back. Of course, I see him starting at the X if he's back for the Clemson game. I got Jermaine Burton at the Z, at the Z, and then I got mm -hmm. Kiaris Jackson, of course, Mister Reliable. We that's the one guy we know what we getting from every single game. Like that dude is coming to play. He's He's going to be our third down guy. He's the boat tunnel screen guy. He can, I don't know how that dude be finding ways in the tunnel screen all the time. Like, you get that dude a tunnel screen, he getting at least 25 yards. Hey, my, I, I tell you right now, my favorite receiver, uh, just hands down, maybe not the, the, the receiver with the most ability. Yeah. Maybe not the, the – well, he ain't the fastest receiver, and he's not going to be the biggest receiver, but he's definitely my favorite out there because I know – what I'm gonna get with those like when those lights always, go. always, and then we got backing him up. You know, we got uh, Arian Smith. I mean, Kirby mm -hmm. said the other day he was working on other aspects of being a receiver because we all know he is uh, Olympic speed fast. <laughs> Blazing. Like I mean, he ran Blazing. a ten one at the Olympic trial, so we already know that. Blazing. But Kirby said he's working on other aspects because if he can, like, if he can add route running to his his uh, resume. And that kind of blazing speed, it's, that's just another weapon. And you got Dominic Blaylock, who hopefully will be cleared by the season, Mr. Reliable, mm -hmm. and then Marcus uh, Roseman Jack Saint. So the weapons are there, but will we activate those weapons? That's what I kind of want to know. Like, what do you think it is? What you, like last year, I know they was that we didn't get no off season last year, so Todd Monk and them really get no spring to install stuff. And you as a former player, you know how important the spring could be as far as like installation and stuff. So you think that was the only reason why we didn't really get to see a lot of that? Um, honestly, no. Um, <clears throat> I, this is how, this is how I feel. I mean, those guys have a lot of technology available okay. to them. Uh, installation doesn't have to happen like it did back in the day when I was in uh, school or shortly thereafter or shortly there before when you had to sit in a meeting room. Yeah. And you had to go through the, you know, all of the game film on premises uh, in meeting rooms, and they weren't able to just do that last year. These guys have technological technological advances. They have tablets. They have links that take them to all of the information and all of the footage that they need to see on opponents. And um, realistically, I would, I, I don't know this for a fact, but I would think that the coaches would have had, you know. Uh, virtual installation with these guys, even if they couldn't go through a spring. I don't know if that if the rules permitted that or whatnot. I'm yeah. just saying, just you know, just thinking out loud ways to get around not being able to meet in person. But I truly, I truly believe that while Munkin came in to kind of add some um, some breath and some and make us a little bit more deep as far as our uh, offensive threat goes. Um, I still feel that inherently um, we are a team that, number one, we didn't really have a solidified quarterback that they felt 100% confident exactly. in. Exactly, exactly. I'm with you. And when you don't have a when you don't have a captain who you um, you're ready to completely let go and let him steer and command that ship, you tend to be a little bit more conservative. Yeah. And so uh, I think toward the end of the year, you know, I think that when JT came in, you saw a little more of what they felt the offense was capable of. Um, and maybe it was some of the decision, maybe. Maybe it was the same plays, different decisions. Gotcha. But it feels like they, at this point, if I go back, you know, the last four or five games of 2020, I think they had a little bit more confidence and a little bit, um, more of a willingness to open the, uh, the uh, offense up. And that in turn kind of made things look a little different because we know that if you play some of the marquee teams, man, these boys have defenses. And we can't three yards in a cloud of dust. No. Many of those marquee teams, no matter how big our line is or how good our backs are. True. 
if we are great at running, then we got to be proficient at passing. If we're pro if we're great at passing, we got to be proficient at run in running, and give us some multidimensionalism to our offense. And so, I just I just think that that was it. They they kind of knew who they had. I think that you know going in with Bill with um with Bennett yep. um, um early in the year the mailman they were okay, but they weren't one hundred percent um open to throwing everything at the wall with him back there. That's just kind of how I felt. It might not be the case. This is how I felt about it. I'm with you on that. I think, you know, as a coach, you have to, because the quarterback is the the essential leader on the field for the team. And if you don't feel like he can make, if you don't feel confident in his every rep with what you want to do, then there are some plays you may say, okay, well, we're not going to call that one today. You know what I'm saying? Like we might call that one against a lesser defense. We can't call that when we go to Tuscaloosa. And we're playing at mm -hmm. night against Alabama because that might be a pick. Because like you said, they got better horses on their defensive side. And then when we mm -hmm. got JT Daniels, for whatever reason, he was sitting out, you know, not clear, not healthy enough to go, whatever it was, you saw a little bit more, okay, well, I'm, I'm more confident in him that he can take that throw. You know what I'm saying? So I mm -hmm. think that was a little bit of what it was too. I just... You know, you hear coaches say, well, you know, we didn't get an all season and we didn't get this. But I'm like you. I'm like, we still got some iPads on. <laughs> <laughs> you got iPads, man. You got email. So they, it's, they have so many devices at their, um, you know, at their disposal. And, I mean, the, the SEC isn't lacking any resources. Let's just put it on out there. I mean, if you want to see your players, you will see your players. If you want to get them an, uh, a playbook, and install in sections, you can do that just as easily as we're sitting here having this uh, discussion right now. So I don't, I, I can't say that it's not a limitation because for me, I know me, I can sit there and look at a playbook all day. And this could be a, a limiting factor. Uh, I still need to get out there. I need to see, I had to see, you know, defenses line up against the, the you know, the calls against the plays that we were calling yeah. because you can't ever just, fully digest anything from an electronic. I don't think you, it, it, football, you got to be out there to practice it. So you can't just digest it electronically, but um, I do also feel like they have a lot of resources. So if you wanted to, you could you could make it happen. That's true. Um, <laughs> yeah, indeed. So with the, we talked about the wide receivers, but we also got those, I mean, and we talked about Eric Gilbert, but, but we got Darnell Washington, man. Darnell Washington is said to be legit six seven six eight. This dude is a freak, dog. Like, and he can run. Like, you know, normally when you that tall, you can't run like this dude be running. You know what I mean? And right, we got him. And he's a great inline blocker. Like, he ain't just out there catching passes. This dude almost, in my opinion, he overall he was the better inline tight end blocker. Now, Fitzpatrick to me can block as long as he don't have to go in motion. If Fitzpatrick have to go in motion. Bruh, do not run to his side. <laughs> that's, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> hey, man, maybe he can throw one of them Tebow blocks out there. No, stop. I saw that today. Stop. <laughs> if they don't cut Tebow and get on with this side show. <laughs> hey, man, let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to cut Tebow a little slack, man. I'm, um, and anybody else who uh, throw out a block like that, because I promise you, me and my boy Randy and Michael, man, we used to make that old booty block. <laughs> I'm hey, let me tell you so that booty block, man. We used to be, we we would literally be in practice perfecting how to uh how to cut somebody off with the booty block. And it's effective. You ain't gotta always blow hey, nobody the ball to you. Hey, the, the name of the game is make sure they don't make the tackle, right? Yeah, yeah. But to your point, man, Darnell, man, he's a big kid, man. I'm, so I'm I'm six six. You know, I'm six. Uh, if you ask some of my partners, some of my, my some of my homeboys, they'll say, "Oh, JB, what you doing? You talking about you probably about six, six three and three three quarters, about six foot. Now, man, I'm six six. With the cleats on. But this dude, man, he looks. I haven't ever stood next to him, man. But he's he looks gargantuan on that field. Dude. It looked like he got a size twenty six shoe. I mean, he lays a step down in between each yard mark. It seems like, it, and uh, you know, he a big and he's a big impressive young yeah. man. Um, and you're right, that inline block and that ability. I mean, when you that big, realistically, you're gonna you should be able to take two or three people with yeah. you. Yeah. Um, which means he'll be a main threat who should be able to at least soak up so, um suck up a uh a safety 
with a linebacker on him to allow some of these outside guys to get free. So I'm a fan of him. I think that he can play. Um, I think he can run to your point. Um, and he does block well. Yeah. You know, I, I, I look, I'm going to tell you, I, again, I have never needed um, me, uh, my tight ends, because I, I like my tight ends to be athletic enough to be able to get out of their stance, get into a route, and catch a ball. You know, I want us to be adequate at blocking, but I don't need I don't need a guy who's great in line all the time. If he's gonna be a detriment to the passing game, I need you to be more of a you know what I'm saying a, yeah a, a benefit to me in the passing game because that's what a tight end but, is supposed to do um, catch passes you know <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, that, yeah that's right <laughs> that's right tight ends catch pass the most athletic position on the offense bar none. <laughs> You heard it. I said it. Whoever wanted to dispute me can. But the he most athletic position. He might not agree with you. I don't know. <laughs> the most athletic position on the field, man. We got to be big enough to b- block 300 pounders. And then we got to be athletic enough to run away from um, two eight, one eight, you know, 185, 200 pound safeties or DBs and linebackers. So the most athletic. But, um, you know, I think that, you know, I. I some of the other guys, some of the backups, uh, you had mentioned, uh, what was my guy's name? Patrick. John mm-hmm. Fitzpatrick. I, from what I saw of the kid, man, thick kid. I heard he does pretty well and did pretty well in high school, yeah. catching the rock too. Um, I'm a fan. I really believe that – I believe, though, even though Eric came in, they they labeled him as a wide receiver, he was going to be playing that second, that second team tight end. So they ever ran t- two tights. Yeah. He might be the wing. He might be, you know, in a, in a slot. But he's gonna be playing that second, that second tight end too. So, I think that we were low. We loaded. I think the the offense is just loaded, loaded everywhere. Loaded, loaded everywhere. But the thing is, Tim. Okay, okay. Now me and CA talked about it a little bit. Now we did have one year where the offense wasn't that good. Uh, Twenty nineteen. Mm-hmm. I think it was a combination mm-hmm. of things. You know, uh, I think it was a little bit of the play calling. Because if you see the last couple of years where you got the LSUs and the, the um, Alabamas, you know, and these guys, Ohio State, these guys just running open. <clears throat> One thing I noticed about the difference in our passing game and their passing game is I'm watching Jalen Waddle run a whole bunch of crossing routes. He just continuously mm-hmm. moving, continuously moving. It's hard to keep up with a good wide receiver when he's continuously moving. But like in 2019, mm-hmm. some of it was Jake from. But some of it was, mm-hmm. we call a lot of stop routes or routes that come to a stop. And I'm like, you got to be a special dude to create separation on the stop route. <laughs> and everybody ain't that special. <laughs> Man, I, I, I 100% agree with you there. I think that that year, um, I think it was a lot on, on Jay Fromm because he would hold the he ball does a that. lot. He does. It wasn't a lot of anticipation coming out of him. Um, or throwing people open, it was thrown to an open you guy took it from whenever he you, could. Yeah, you it. took it right from me. I don't think that – that's why – he didn't – if you notice, Jake Fromm didn't throw over the middle. Like, when I say throw over the middle, 10 yards, 15 yards in, he didn't throw over the middle line. Mm-hmm. I don't believe that the staff fully trusted him to throw it. He threw a lot to the sideline. He was great with an out route. But like you – Or that back, that, back, or shoulder, the back throw. shoulder throw. But it's like if it wasn't a post route, like a deep post, we didn't go in the middle a lot, and he held the ball. And I remember him saying something on the side on in an interview one time. He said, "You can't go broke taking a profit." I'm like, "I'm glad you don't throw a lot of interceptions, but bro, you can't take a sack all the time and hold the ball." <laughs> like, yeah, and you can't throw the ball late on those stops and stuff like that. I, I, so yeah, I mean, to your point, I, you know, we have a lot of conversations about this, right? The think tanks that yeah. we are <laughs> about what the issues were, especially then. And you look at the schemes, though. I think that, again, we were just extremely conservative at times. Yes. You know, running on first down, running on second down, and then when you're predictable, which is to Jake Fromm's detriment, really to any yeah. quarterback's detriment. I don't care who you are. If the defense knows that you're throwing on third and long, and that's kind of becoming your, you know, if, that, if that's kind of how you run your program and your offense, it's going to be tough for any quarterback to really be successful. You got to be able to get people on their heels a little bit. And I don't think we did a whole lot of that. I also think we struggled at O-line in 2019. Even though we had some high-profile guys. Every year. We, every year. We, we struggled at O-line. And 
you know, I think that was um, uh, some of the issues that we had. I just, I, I just think that we just need to kind of move into uh, Kirby. That's my guy, man. I love me some Kirby. <laughs> love Kirby. Listen, Can't say I enough. don't want another coach, but I need my boy to, to move into the 21st century on offense. That's all I need. We do. And I think that he's, I think he's saving, you know, you know, half a decade ago, five years ago, where he was, because, you know, if you remember, Saban used to win with yep. defense, special teams, and an adequate offense who could put enough points on the on the board to be able to get you a duck. Yep. I think Kirby was still there. Now he brought Munkin in. Um, and it's still to be seen. But all I know is is that it don't really matter who's the coach and the offensive coordinator at Alabama. When Saban pulls the trigger on his decisions, it seems like everything follows through. I don't care what kind of offense you ran before, you're gonna run yeah, that offense. Exactly. Now, I am. <laughs> I am interested in seeing how my guy who uh, uh, got fired from the Texans, um, Bill O'Brien. Yeah. Bill O'Brien. That's his name. Bill O'Brien. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm interested in seeing what his version of what that offense was last year looks like now. Yeah. Because we saw what happened to LSU once they lost their guy. True right? that. True that. But what ha- what we have seen with Saban, like you said, he's replaced he's replaced assistants and coordinators like almost every year. And when he say yeah. this, what we running. This what we're running, or you can't get the job. And I just, I think Kirby is trying to move that way because otherwise, why go get Todd Munkin? Because if anybody looked at Todd Munkin's history, Todd Munkin keeps a balanced offense. But Todd Munkin, when he was at Oklahoma State, you know, he got a, th- a thousand yard, two thousand yard receivers and a thousand yard tail uh, rusher. Mm-hmm. So it's like yeah. I'm not saying we got to be air raid, but we kind of said it off camera, but. Like Clemson is like they not air raid. Clemson is balanced. It's like, but they can do it from any formation. You don't know whether they're gonna run the ball, whether they're gonna throw a swing pass, whether they're gonna actually just line up and pass the ball. And I think we got the talent to do that, if not more talent than they do. And that's all. I, that's all I want. All the talent we just talked about. Let's activate the talent. Put them in position. How they can put them in a position where they can be successful. Even if we have a little weakness at O line, realize it. Run those crossing routes. Know your people, know your opposition. Not to say that the coaches don't. I ain't sitting here saying that, but what I will say is, is that if you have a guy who runs a runs a 10 1 in the 100 meters, now I don't know if a lot of people know how that correlates because I literally, you know, when I got to high school, I mean got to college, I think Thad Parker might have ran like a 10, like maybe from a 10 3 to a 10 yeah. 6. Thad Parker could move. Right, this man runs a 10 1. I mean, literally, you have people winning the Olympics at 9 8. You know, I ain't no Hussein Bolts out there, he running what 9 nine, six, 6 9. But yeah, but, you're right. <laughs> but 10 1. Now, if this guy can do anything other than go straight, I'm gonna have to expose that speed. Somebody gonna have to run with him. And if he's not the number one or two receiver out there, that means I got him on their third DB. That's or say uh, you got you, you boy you all in my head i we be talking about this all the time like dog <laughs> we don't always have to go to the number one wide receiver because he normally getting played by the number one corner but we got an arian right. smith in the slot you telling me normally in slot i'm, I'm not saying this for every team but normally the slot db ain't the best cover corner he might right. be the third, the third fourth guy. depends Nickel guy. He might be that nickel of the dime So you guy. telling me this dude going to check my dude? Like, if anybody needs to know Arian Smith's, like, how it translates, all they got to do is watch the catch he caught in the Cincinnati game. If you watch him from the, from the snap, within four steps, he was already past the DB. It was like, and the only reason why he didn't score is because JT put too much air under the ball, which... That's mm-hmm. one of the things I want JT to get better this year. He His deep ball, it's like, almost like he don't recognize how fast these guys are. It's like, yo, bro, you don't yeah. have to put that much air. Just throw it. They're going to go get it. You know what I mean? Well, you got different different receivers out there, yeah. too. Because if you got Pickens out there, I'm going to make sure that Pickens has opportunity to use his height and his Put the air under the ball for Arian Pickens. Smith, yeah. <laughs> I want to get him in stride. Because if he catches it. Matter of his- fact, I'm going to put it out there and I'm going to stretch yeah. you out. Yeah, like if anything, make Arian die for the ball because it, I don't know if you can if he gets two steps going before you let the ball go. I don't know if you can't overthrow him because the dude is just like blazing fast. So hey, we're gonna have to see. We're gonna challenge his speed. I, it, but to your point, yeah, you you're right. You're right. Got You gotta man. You gotta look at it. I think that that's why Alabama was so good. Number one, number number one, Alabama had 
a Heisman Trophy winner who was that would not have sniffed half those passes had Waddle not got hurt. Bruh. To me, Waddle is the, was to me even though Smith came on and did what he did, phenomenal, yeah. spectacular. Those guys had two Heisman Trophy receivers on their team, and Waddle by no stretch of the imagination. And this, this I mean, I, I argue this was. I think he was twice the receiver that Devontae Smith. Well, you know, he came into the year as the Heisman favorite. And then and exactly. then once he went down, Devontae was still doing his thing. But if you remember yeah. when they had all four, Judy, Ruggs, Waddle, and Smith, Smith was like almost the forgotten sibling. You know what I'm saying? Even though he was really good, mm -hmm. it's just that, like you said, all them other dudes. The other guys were just that good. Just that exactly, great. exactly. And when Waddle went down, you know, then, I mean, it's like Devontae was already doing his thing, and then it just doubled because now they ain't got Waddle, and, and they did a good job of moving that dude around, like putting him in mismatches, and it was almost child's play, to be honest with you, dog. <laughs> but right. we, He might beat you on a goal. He might beat you on a cross, on a slant. He might meet, beat you on a, you know, a comeback. Yes. <laughs> and, yeah, the, the, yeah, we just need to we need to make sure that we are exposing what we have. I mean, I, I really like Jermaine Burton. I think that he runs some tremendous routes. He's, a he's the best route, route runner on good. the team. He's the best, definitely best oh route God, runner on the team. That route. dude has the potential mm -hmm. to be in those conversations about the Belitnikov and all of that. Again, mm -hmm. now, Todd Munkin is in a bit of a situation. He's in a good situation and a bad situation. He in a good situation because he has all that talent, but he's in a bad situation because he has all that talent. And it's like, who gonna get the ball? Like that's the thing. It's like who gonna get the ball? You know what I mean? It's yeah. Hey, that's why JT gotta be out there and be accountable. <laughs> it's a it's a good problem to have. I'd rather have that problem hey. than to not have the talent. So yeah, I'd rather have it and not need it than to need it and not that's have right. it. That's right. And on to the old line, we got talent. You said this earlier. We got talent on the old line, but what year haven't we had talent on the old line under Kirby though? So yeah, there yeah. really should be. I'm not saying it's gonna be the best line. All I'm saying is there should be no reason they shouldn't be one of the best lines in the SEC, if not the country. Because I know we had our, our center. He um he broke his wrist or or sprained his wrist or something like that. But Cedric Van Pran was an All American coming out, and from 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 the mop up duty time that he got last year, we could see like he was calling. I forget who was right beside him. It was a guard right beside him that was an upperclassman, and it was one game where I think it was the Mississippi State game. He got in some uh, in, and he was actually calling out the coverage, telling the the upperclassman like, "Nah, though, this is who you supposed to be blocking." I'm like, so he already like got the mindset and physically. I mean, all the linemen look like they should be ready for the pro physically, to be honest with you. So I don't see why a reason why we shouldn't be good on the offensive line this year. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, well I think from uh, who, who who we have been, you know, offensively, Kirby tends to recruit. He, I mean, he, number one, phenomenal job at recruiting. I mean, it goes without yeah. saying. We, we know who we have. It, we have an embarrassment of riches across the board. It's always – being able to align those pieces so that we can fill in the puzzle yep. to complete that whole the whole trajectory and that journey that we got and that we want, which is a ship. Yep. But to your point, man, I, I, he he recruits offensive of linemen, and since he's been at UGA, it seems like you can plug one in for another. They look the yep. same. They they have that mentality of alignment that I like. A mentality, a mentality like um, like Jonas Jennings had. You know what I'm saying? Jonas, Jon you, you might meet Jonas at the bar or at the uh, <laughs> at, you know at the pub, sports yep. bar, or something like that. Jonas just nice. You know what I'm saying? Just a jovial cat. Just you know, real good brother. A uh, hell of a teammate. Just a real solid guy. But man, you get Jonas on that football field. Now, one Jonas gonna talk about your dog like a dog. I mean, <laughs> I literally, we used to we used to have conversations about how ugly our opponent was in front of our opponent. <laughs> and I mean, they were hot. Jonas was that kind of guy, but he was nasty. I mean, nasty, mean. That's the kind of guys that Kirby seems to have across the board all the time. Even the guys that leave yep. are some tremendous talents. You know, um, Kate, big, you know what I'm saying? Big boy, who went up to Tennessee? Kate, who was that? Kate Mays, he was, Kate Mays. was good. Hey, yeah. I hated to lose him, but dude was good. 
Yeah, and I think that we're gonna have the same thing this year. It's still about I, I think that even past us not having a good O-line, I just think that the defenses in the SEC are that good to where no matter how good your line is, yeah. you gotta have some diversity in your offense. But if you if you have a little bit of yeah. that, man, it, it allow our big boys to eat because now they're leaning forward and coming off the ball and the defense don't really know what's going on. And when they pass blocking, it's like a great wall of China yeah. around. Them. Yeah. So you just got to have a little diversity to help those big guys yeah, out. Yeah, because like you said, when defense know what you're doing, then it's kind of hard for them to be great. Now it's like, I got to be great. I got to tell you what I'm doing and be great at it. Like, you already got to, like, that's 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 asking a little bit too much. So hopefully we'll – I think we're going to have to see that, you know, um, you know, first first game. We don't have no – Yeah. We can't, you know, normally you get your – you know, you get your directional schools or whoever the first game. You can try a little something, something, but – in Charlotte, September 4th. Now you gotta be clicking. Ain't no hiding. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I mean wrap it up. Clip Clemson is some heat, man. And Clemson they returning all eleven starters, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh on defense, they return they return ten starters. Uh the only the only starters. reason why they didn't return the, the eleven starters because he had so we got because one. he in the red and black. Exactly, because he in the red and black. And if we can hold up against their defensive line. I feel like it's some plays to be made against that defense, though, because yeah. their linebackers and safeties cannot cover tight ends. That's why when I was talking to you, always a liability. That's why we say they're, they're their liability. They're exactly. Covers. Like if you watched the Alabama game uh, a couple years ago, and then like uh, the Ohio State game last year, the tight ends and the Notre Dame game, they all use their tight ends against Clemson, and Clemson they just uh, something about their linebackers and safeties cannot check the tight end. So we got this talented tight end. I need them to use. It. I don't want to run twelve personnel fifty percent of the game, and all we doing is running the ball. Like, right? Like we need to have yeah. the two tight ends yeah. in some. Right. We they need to be in routes. I ain't saying you got to throw it to them all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like I ain't unrealistic. I don't think that. We can have us a tight end going for 800 yards, and we got receivers that, you know, trying to get a 1,000 yards. It's not going to work like that, but you got to use them so that kind of like the year that Alabama beat Clemson with Deshaun Watson in the championship, they had O.J. Howard. O.J. Howard had a pretty steady year until the until the championship game, and O.J. Howard had like nine catches. <laughs> it was like, you mm -hmm. know, you got to put these top tight ends to use. So that's – Especially when you have to – Yeah. And you got that talent, but yeah, you yeah. To your point, yeah, you're right. We got to go into this game uh, clicking. It can't be getting warmed up through the first half, because we might be down 28-0. Yeah. I'm a true believer in in Dabo's proficiency. I think that he's proven himself to be probably the third best coach in the country. If you if you take out Saban and um, uh, geez, uh, my guy, what school from Florida? Ooh, Myers. Oh, Urban Meyer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Urban Meyer. Uh, yep. Listen. You know what I'm saying? I think that uh, I think that Dabo's the third best coach. Maybe I'm, I can't say in he like one. If you, I don't even know if it's a two. I think they one one A, one B, and one C. Yeah. To be honest yeah. with you, and then you got some other guys that fall to that you know two through whatever. Yeah. But you got to come into that game clicking because Dabo has shown himself to get his team. And put a team on field, a team that is competitive, no matter who they lose. You're right. You're right. And who, whoever they lose, when when they lost to Sean, even though uh, Trevor was coming out of high school, then he was highly touted because I seen him play in high school. We played against him. I think it was my son's senior yeah. year. Um, he still they hit the ground running with that young man. They honestly they didn't they didn't miss that much of a beat when they had Kelly Bryant in between Deshaun and Trevor. That year they had Kelly Bryant, yeah. they lost in the playoffs in the first round, you know, and that wasn't all on Kelly Bryant, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So you yep. know, with that said, like they got a good defense, but we got a good defense. We got some young people on yep. the defense. Uh I'm looking forward to seeing what uh Jordan Davis can do, Devontae Wyatt on that defensive line. Uh Man, come on. We like defensive line, like it just keeps going. You got J Jalen Carter, you got uh Trevon Walker. And I try to tell people, I know Aziz had 10 sacks last year. Aziz was the man. He could stop the run. Mm -hmm. He was our best outside linebacker because he was all around. But he was not We finna bring up Dean Nicobe. Nicobe yeah. Dean. Nicobe, hey, Nicobe is a tackling machine. But when we talk about outside pass rushing. Aziz had the most sacks, but he wasn't our best pass rusher. Our best pass rusher is Adam Anderson. 
Adam gets to the quarter. Oh, yeah, that long guy. Bruh. And a lot of times, guy Aziz play. got the sack because they was running from Adam Anderson. So I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm not worried about a pass rusher. I just need to know that Nolan Smith can come in and do what Aziz did setting that edge. Because you know how it is mm -hmm. with that speed coming out of the backfield. If you can't set the edge, it's going to be a long day for them linebackers. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I and, and I'm a huge fan of Nolan, man. I think that kid, I like his build. I, I, he, to me, when I see him on film, he looks shorter than he really is. I mean, he's not a tremendously short guy. I mean, what are we talking six, about? He's like uh, six three. A linebacker. <laughs> yeah, they got they, they have him listed as six foot. I don't, oh, 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 you talking about Nicobe or 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 or? No, I'm talking about um, Nolan? Nolan. They got him listed as six. He yeah. definitely ain't no six foot. <laughs> Uh, they got him listed at six foot two thirty five. I don't know if that's supposed to be six. I think that I think that was supposed to be six three. He easy at six three. He might be easy six three. Yeah, that, and, and so he's a he's a player who I think that I, I think that I think the world this young guy. I think he's gonna step not even step in because he plays yeah. ball. He's been playing True. ball. But uh, to your point, I think that he's gonna um, be able to meet all expectations i got you not i mean a thick kid he can handle his his business i like anderson but i also like nicole dean that, i love that young kid when i first saw him playing oh man man he he got me excited <laughs> he's uh, seeking missile so he, he's one of my favorites he's, he's one of my hey watch this guy this year type of linebackers for them but we could very well have you know we could very well e and easily have you know two or three linebackers taken this year in a draft in the first two rounds yeah. without question. Without question, you're right. You know, we got that kind of talent, and we got some tremendous talent back back in the month, too. So I'm excited about that defense. I think that we got some, you know, some some studs, some studs that's gonna show themselves to be ready for the SEC grind. Yep. And you know, you couple that with a a, a a the type of talent we have coming in at DB that came in this year from Clemson. Uh, what's my, what's my Darian Kendrick? Darian uh, Kendrick. Kendrick uh, Darian mm -hmm. Kendrick. Um, we needed one of those guys. Yeah. And you don't you don't get it's kind of weird now. This guy was I know he got in some trouble over there at uh at Clemson, you know. But you just don't get guys who are perennial all league guys who could yeah. very easily be you know all American guys coming into your squad for their senior year who played a ton, ton of football. Of football. Ton. I'm, I'm I'm excited about what that means for the rest of the defense because that was going to be one of the weakest parts of our defense, which is going to be that back end up there on in the and specifically the cornerback. Yeah, position. we can just get a corner opposite him, the you know, regardless of who it is, Amir Speed, Jalen Kimber, you know, we got the talent out there. Uh what's my <laughs> Keely Ringo? Because our safeties yeah. are solid. I mean Chris Smith you know, he's he's definitely so I think he came in and did a real good job for Richard LeCount when Richard LeCount had the uh the motorcycle accident. Mm -hmm. And Lewis Seen is one of my favorite players on the defense. I've liked him since the yeah. day he stepped on campus. That dude, like and, and when I watch him interview, I love him because the media be trying to get little tidbits out of him and he won't give him nothing. He just give him that coach speak. I say, look at Lewis learning from Kirby. <laughs> and he will take your I love seeing ever since he tattooed up <laughs> Kyle uh, Pitts. <laughs> Bro, they that showed it in slow mo. I still don't think it was targeted, but I was like, I'll give you that. I don't listen. Lewis C mm -hmm. said his daddy told him, You either the hammer or you the nail, and he chose you the nail. And I'm gonna always be exactly. the hammer. Exactly. Yeah. I love that dude, man. Let's take a look at this schedule, man. Like, we talked about a little bit, like, about Clemson, man. I schedule after Clemson. I'm not saying it's easy, I'm saying it's very manageable. And with the talent that we mm -hmm. have, Thinking about what everybody, because a lot goes into winning the national championship. It's not just how good you are. It's schedule, yeah. it's health, you know, and then it's a little bit of luck here and there. So we 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 play Clemson, we follow that up yep. with uh, Alabama, Birmingham, you know, which mm -hmm. which should be if we have any injuries in the Clemson game or or any mishaps or anything, we can work on them against Alabama, Birmingham. That's a get right game. Exactly. Right then we bring South Carolina in in between the hedges at night at 7.30. I personally believe we're going to beat them by three touchdowns. They, I just don't feel like they where we at 
I know they beat us in I know they'll all say they beat us in 2019, but I think a lot of that had to do with coaching too. <laughs> but yeah, I mean and, and coaching and, and uh we just had some bad quarterbacks. And some bad that quarterbacks. That was probably, probably Prom's worst game, <laughs> period. Um, but you're right. We we should we should annihilate them. It shouldn't even be close. They're not they're not the South Carolina they're, and the Gamecocks that we've known. Them to be like when they had Mike Davis, yes. When they had Jadavion uh, Clowney uh, and Jadavion, and yes, you know they're not those guys. No, they're right? not. And then we follow that up with a trip to Vanderbilt, mm-hmm. which I am going to, which I try to go to every time we go because we always take over the stadium in Vanderbilt, like the dogs, like the mm-hmm. dudes, dog do. That's definitely they got. They breaking in a new coach. Um, what's the guy, Derek Lee or something like that? He was he's a Vanderbilt alumni coming from. He was a defense coordinator at Notre Dame, but. Regardless, they not you know Vandy. The fact that we lost, they, did we lose the Vandy? Uh, Kirk, we lost the Vandy homecoming when I was in in school. Bruh. I remember that. But when but you lose the Vandy, it's just something something happened inside you. You like how we lose? Yeah, look, I, it's that you you all gonna throw the whole season away <laughs> <laughs> when you lose the Vandy. That's just kind of how it works out. I know. You throw the whole season away, man. We should we should spank, man. Exactly. Um, without a shadow of a doubt. We should we should, I mean that's another get right game, man. We should have two um games that allow us to be able to kind of <coughs> actually three. I mean, I know you're gonna go to this Arkansas game yep. too. Um I don't know if Arkansas are gonna I, I know they lost listen, a lot of weapons. Listen, too. man, they got a good receiver. The dude, they got I forget what his name is. He's a really good receiver. Their quarterback is decent. I want to tell the Georgia fans that's watching this right now, stop thinking about 2020 first half, thinking Arkansas going to come into Athens and give us a battle. I mean, it's going it might, I respect Sam Pittman, don't get me wrong, but the reason why that game was close in the first half, it wasn't even because of DeJuan Mathis. I mean, he didn't play good, but first of all, we had the wrong offense alignment in, in the game. We had Owen Condon at right tackle, and Owen Condon was getting his butt absolutely whooped. What changed when Stetson Bennett got in there? When Stetson Bennett's first play, Warren McClendon was at right tackle. From then on, right tackle has been solidified. And then I think they moved uh, Jamari Sawyer to the um, to the left tackle. And then it's like the offensive line started playing good. So Stetson, yeah, start, Stetson played better than DeWan. Don't get me wrong. But mm-hmm. that that first half, I, I hear people, I watch ESPN, watching all these sports analysts talking about how Arkansas is going to give like listen man it's like stop thinking that first half is what we what we going to be like come October 2nd it's not going to be like right. that and I I mean like I say Sam Pittman going to have his offensive line ready but they just top to bottom do not have enough talent to be in the game with us I don't think I think that's a two yeah. touchdown game minimum you know like you said we had the three get right games before Arkansas we should be at full swing come first Saturday in October. Right, right. And then you approach the oldest rivalry in, in the, the South. South. The, the oldest rivalry in the South. Man, I tell you, I got my opinions, but I, I don't like Auburn. <laughs> me neither. Me neither. Hey, listen, me neither. I don't, res- I don't respect them. I know they're a rivalry, but they're a rivalry in the sense that they don't like us and we don't like them. I actually did a video on this because I had some Auburn fans talking about, well, it's always close. I'm like, no. Yeah, it's always close. I mean, we we drag y'all pretty, pretty regularly. I mean, if you want to count that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Like, Thank take, you. I take, a lot of so- I take a lot of solace in calling them slobbering all the time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm like, man, we it's nine and three in the last 12. Like, like it's only a rivalry because we're recruiting the same players. You know what I'm saying? Like back in the day. Are y'all in the ACC? Yeah, back in the day it was back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But when Mark Rick got there, Mark Rick's like, I don't know about that. Like, let's 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 turn this Tennessee Auburn thing not in, even into a really a rivalry because we just been killing them. I mean, they I know last time we went to Auburn was uh what, 20, 2019. We beat Bo Nix. We, we, 2019, we beat Bo Nix. But the year 2017, when they had Jerry Stidham, they, they put a real whooping on us. But they had Jerry Stidham, who, who was drafted to the to the Patriots, and then they had Kerryon Johnson in that backfield. Now, Tank Bisbee, mm-hmm. Tank Bisbee. Well, that's that wasn't 2017, was it? 20, that's the year we went to the championship. They beat us down, and then we beat them in the SEC championship. 
Oh, yeah, the championship, the championship yeah. game. Man, it don't seem Bruh, like it was that long ago, man. That's, that's what I'm saying. And yeah. that was the first time they had beat us since Nick Marshall was the quarterback. Yeah. And that in that in the in the it was that the the prayer, prayer and Jordan Hare. And Jordan Hare. And before that, it was Cam Newton. So those three times that they've beaten us in the last like 13, 14 tries has been exceptional quarterback play. And really good running back Real play, time. and they got a good running back. I do mm-hmm. like Tank Bisbee, but I'm not scared. I'm not, I'm not scared too. of Bo Nix. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm just yeah. I'm not. But and I'm not scared of Tank Bisbee. I, well, either. I, I think that he's yeah. a, a great talent. But yeah, I'm not. I I, I don't uh, for some reason I just don't go into that that uh, Auburn game. I, when they beat us, it's kind of like oh, I'm wow. shocked. <laughs> when they beat us, I'm shocked. I was shocked. Jake Jake Fromm didn't play all that great his freshman year against them, but hey, it's whatever. I mean. I'm shocked when we lose to Auburn. Let's just say that. <laughs> yeah. Same. We follow that up with Kentucky. Uh, Mark Stoops, I actually like Mark Stoops, man. Mark Stoops get a lot mm-hmm. out of his program for the t- amount of talent that he get. You know what I'm saying? Like, he yeah. ain't – you don't never see Mark Stoops in the top 10, top 15 in recruiting. But yet, when he get, like, year three or four of them players, he always roll off mm-hmm. about eight or nine games. I mean, I don't ever be worried about him, but like he always put a good team on the field, so – He's a great, he's a great do more with less coach. Definitely, definitely. So we go after that game. We got us a bye, as usual, before we roll into Jacksonville and play them games. What you, what you thinking about that game? Ah, uh, I, I had a feeling we were gonna lose last year. Okay. Um, I, I don't fear. I don't fear the Gators. I had a feeling we were going to lose the game last year just because we were kind of inept. And they had a good defense, I think, and we were kind of in between of, of who we are, who we yeah. were. Yep. We didn't have an identity. Yep. Um, th- this year, I think that by the time we build up to and get to Florida, um, you know, I'm a – you know, I can't say that I dislike Dan Mother. I can. Because I, I always <laughs> – well, I had always liked the fact that he did a lot with Les too when he was at Miss State. But um, I'm not a fan of Dan Mullen. And I think that I, I really think I don't think the Curve is a fan of Dan Mullen. I don't either. think so either. I would love to ask her. I don't think he liked Dan Mullen at all, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, I, I think that we go I think that we're gonna hang I think we're gonna beat those guys by double digits. I think it might just creep into the double digits by my maybe like 10 to 14 yeah. or 13. Um, but I think that we're gonna put a put a spanking on those guys, be it if we all arrive at that game kind of in the same state, yeah. healthy mm-hmm. or uh and, and you know, um, you know, and we have all of our players. I think that we're gonna hang hang something on them that we ain't gonna let them forget for the rest of the year. I'm with you. I'm with you. And like with Dan Mullen, I I know a lot of people call him the quarterback whisperer. I don't really think that. I think he's a really good offensive call, play caller because he mm-hmm. recognizes when I when I hear quarterback whisperer, I think okay, when this guy came to you, he wasn't that good of a quarterback, and you increased like you made him a better passer because that's what quarterback supposed to do: throw the ball. So I don't mm-hmm. feel like he's that great at that. I think he's good at calling plays to fit your skill set. So if he's got that running mm-hmm. quarterback like an Emory Jones, he's going to call a lot less, you know, stuff that Emory Jones can't do, which I think is good. But when you play against Kirby defense, that don't fare well. And we all remember right. 2017 when they came, when Mississippi State came into Athens, it was built up as a, oh, this gonna be it. Which one? They both undefeated. Who gonna? We took them behind the woodshed, bro. Because the dude can't really throw. Like if you can throw, then you stand a chance against Kirby's defense. If you can't throw, I don't care how athletic you are behind the line. It's gonna be a, it's long, gonna day. Be a long day. <laughs> it's gonna be a long day because them boys can run and they can hit. You ain't no catching on on Kirby's no. defense. <laughs> It's, it's contact. It's striking. Exactly. So if you like Emory Jones, unless he's something that I don't know that he is from what he's shown in mop up duty, I, he's not a like a great passer. He's a he's a hell of an athlete, mm-hmm. but he's not a great passer. So that's why I'm not not that the Florida's not formidable, but I'm like you. I think we're gonna win by at least ten to fourteen, if not more, if you don't get away from him early. So mm-hmm. then we got we just gotta get a little out of that yep. offense. We gotta get it out the offense. That's what happened to us last year. We didn't get anything at that. No, offense. we didn't. We put our we didn't. We had a tremendous defense, man. 
Like people talk about our defense and how they didn't show up in Alabama. No, our defense showed up in Alabama. Our offense didn't give them anything. They didn't give them any risk. Yeah. They didn't give them any field position. First half. You can't play the exactly. whole game. You can't play the whole exactly. game. And in the second half, it really started like halfway through the third quarter at Alabama where we start going, mm -hmm. like you said, they didn't get no rest. They start going three and out. You can't go three and out consecutively and think your defense, I don't care who you got on defense. You can have right. LT and Ray Lewis and <laughs> Ed Reed. But if you rigid, 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 uh, Reggie White, uh, <laughs> exactly, you you can have all of them on the same defense. When they get tired, you tired. Exactly. As well. So as long as we gotta make sure we stay out those three and outs, and if we can stay out those three and outs, then our defense can 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 perform effectively like we need them to. Now, I believe that 100%. the game after Florida, this could go like I think we're gonna beat Missouri. But it could go closer than we hope it to be, only because if we beat Clemson and run the table, this is normally when that pre that uh, playoff poll, the, the the college football playoff poll comes out, and we we would either be one or two if we if we undefeated at this point. And the last what you ha what I have to remember is these still some eighteen to twenty year olds. You mm -hmm. see, you know they read them prisoners. And if the offense is clicking and we beating people 14, 20, and Missouri, I feel like it's going to come in second in the East. I feel like we're going to win the East. I feel like Missouri going to come in second in the East. I like the guy, Eli. Drink. Hey, I'm telling you, they got a good quarterback. He was a true freshman against us last year. Uh, they defensive coordinator. He might not have the talent that we have, but he knows how, you know what I'm saying? He knows how to call coverages to, to try to, to, to try to, I guess, make it a stalemate or, or whatever. So we mm -hmm. actually have to go out there. And I think that's why it was close in the first half last year. And they don't even have the talent that we have. But right. I feel like coming off a high of beating Florida, possibly being in the top two on that first ranking, you start reading your clippings, the first half could give us a little bit of trouble. And then in, <clears throat> then in the second half, we realize who we are. And that's like, okay, now let's go ahead and do it. Then you end up beating somebody like 31 to 20 or something where it shouldn't have been that close in the first place. I can subscribe to that. I can subscribe to that. I mean, you have those <clears throat> those look past yeah. games, and Missouri could be that special. Like you said, if we go into that game, um, if we go into that game with one loss, True. we still going to be in the top True. four. <clears throat> and – you know, we we always have what one thing that I think that Kirby has done a lot better. Um, <clears throat> I say better, not a lot better, because we still have I think came out flat in games, but it's always been against great competition when we've had those flat yeah. games. So I don't know if they've been li look past games like when we lost to Louis uh, LSU yeah. when we got spanked by Auburn. Um, I think that he's always been able to get his guys to come out and compete <clears throat> formidably against those look look by yeah. games, those directional schools, a team that's a little bit lesser. Yeah. It might take us a little while to kind of get going, but we normally don't lose those games. So I think that, to your point, I think they can give us a, a, a rough time. Um, but I still think that we're going to beat Missouri by, by minimum 14 points. Minimum. Which is what we should. Which I we mean, should. We should. Which we should. <clears throat> Coming out of that, then we go to Tennessee, another team. I just don't like them. I don't. I don't know. I just. I just don't like Tennessee. I don't care who yeah. coaching. I, I, the orange is ugly. <laughs> just... Any squad that have orange on, man, I'm telling you, it's a derelict of duties for me to even <laughs> say anything decent about them. I. I. I, I, look, I grew up. So I'm from Alabama. Grew up an Alabama fan, man. Everybody who I literally despised as a, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying a kid growing up, I still despise to this day right now as a dog. So Tennessee ranks right up yeah. to the, the I, I I I don't never really have. I'm I, I'm so happy they are where they are right uh, now. I, and I and I hope they stay there for another twenty. I do too. I want them to every day wake up mad because they fired Phil Fulmer from that coaching job. <laughs> I indeed, I do not indeed. like to. Matter of fact, bring back Derek Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely on with that. I'm definitely on with that. Oh, hey, the Dooley name wasn't so good up in Knoxville. So I'm definitely down with that. Just like, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, man. Our boy is back on the staff. Uh, 
back on the staff at Georgia, Mr. Muschamp. But hey, I, I didn't mind old Will Muschamp in South Carolina because I always knew we was gonna get the dub. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Oh, hey, I tell you, man, I'm blessed, champ, man. I know you, like you said, I know what I'm going to get hey, from. Exactly. I know I'm going to get a defense that's coming, but I'm going to get plenty of opportunities to blow you <laughs> exactly, out. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And then we got that that uh, that perennial directional school that we play right before we play the rival Charleston Southern. That'll be a game for, you know, get right, hold some people out just in case if they injured anything, something like that. That might be the game we see that game and you and uh UAB will get to see that backup quarterback Carson Beck. Um, yep. get get a lot of reps, yep. so he's ready at any time. And then on to the technical school in downtown Atlanta. Um I can't say nothing good about them, though. I'm sorry. Uh <laughs> hey man. Of all so I, I actually gained one one school to absolutely despise and hate. When I say hate, I'm saying capital H. <laughs> And end it with a capital E. I cannot stand Georgia Tech. Bruh. Don't I? I don't I, care if I, I turn. This might be listen, I, I don't care I, if I turn the game on. I'm gonna turn ESPN on, and they playing lacrosse or cricket. Georgia, I need Georgia Tech to lose. <laughs> Man, I just, I, I, I literally, they, they, they sit at the top of my hate list in front of Florida, in front of Tennessee. I can't stand that school, man. I just think that even from back in the day when, you know, they knew they cheated us out of those games when we played over there at their high school stadium yeah. and they claimed the Jasper Fumble. Yep. I cannot stand <laughs> those schools. Specifically, I cannot stand some of the culture. I can't to this day, O'Leary, oh my oh man, Listen. please. I would not, if he was on fire, you know what I wouldn't do. Listen. I'm still you know mad I'm that they fired Paul Johnson because I like whooping up on him. <laughs> Brain Paul, <laughs> Brain Johnson, Paul Johnson, Johnson back. back. Y'all dirty. But you know, you we're going to do old Jeff Sims or whatever his name is. We're going to do him the same way. It's just like, hey, I just can't. Oh, he's going to he gonna get the treatment. He's going to get and the like treatment. And like when we play them, I don't even be like, I don't, like, you know, as a coach, I get it. You know, public relations, you up 30, 40, whatever it is. You, you're taking out all your starters. Like, listen, if it wasn't for injury possibilities, I want to keep my starters in the whole game against Tick. <laughs> so, yeah, hey, listen, if you on fire and you think I'm gonna put a little water yeah. on you, I'm gonna throw gasoline on you. I ain't throwing water on you. I wanna, I want them to burn to the bone. Exactly. <laughs> I wanna, so I don't want them to be recognizable when I'm finished with them. That's what I, I just. Without that say, I, with that say, I don't think there's gonna be much of a, a competition there, and unless something uh, tragic happens or thing, they just don't have it. I know they got the whole full, full Waffle House and all that going on, but that ain't gonna help you when we line up in between them up in between them lines. So, with that said, man, yeah. I see when I break it down by game. If we win the Clemson game, it seems like we should go twelve and zero. But you know, you play; it's hard to go undefeated. It is. So what do you think? What what do you see for the season? For for the regular season? Um, so I think that we're gonna either go 12 and 0 or we're gonna go 10 and 2. Mm. Um, and I'll say why. If we lose that first that Clemson game first, okay. um I think the shit will get righted. But I'm sitting here, and even though I hate the fact that I I could I I feel like this. I mean, that Auburn game and that Florida game are gonna be detrimental to mm. us. And if we lose that Clemson game, I just had a feeling that one of those games could slide. Mm, um, but if we beat Clemson, I don't think that there's gonna be enough to hold us back. I think that that's gonna be the um, the catalyst for a special season because then we're going to get it early. I got you. You know, he, he, now if let's say this, and I add a third caveat in there. If we lose bad to Clemson, mm -hmm. I feel like we'll go 10 and 2. Okay. If we lose close to Clemson in a close game, three, maybe seven, something yeah. like that, I think that we'll go 11 and okay. 1. Okay. It, that game, I think, is going to be the catalyst for our entire season. Um, and if we beat them, I think that we go going to beat them. If we're 100% healthy mm -hmm. with everybody and Kirby has moved forward and let Todd Munkin be Todd Munkin, 
it's hard for me to see us not going 12 and 0. If we lose to Clemson, yeah. I still see 11 and 1. Just because of what, like I say, not just based on what we are, but based on what other people are. Like Florida literally only returns five starters. And I get that the SEC is definitely deep and talented every weekend, every week, every Saturday. But when you're talking about losing Kyle Pitts, Kyle mm-hmm. Trask, we're not talking about regular good talent. We're talking about Kyle to- uh, to- uh, Tony, Tony Kadarius, Tony, Trevon Grimes. I mean, people forget that he was on the team. I mean, when you lose that, I just don't. And you lose, like I say, Kyle Trask was a great passer of the ball. Emory Jones Mm -hmm. might be a better athlete, but I don't see him being the passer that Trask was. So when you lose that, unless we, we beat ourselves if we lose to Florida. That's all I'm saying. Like, there's no way Florida's beating us. And then Auburn, I, you guys, anybody in my circle, man, I don't respect Auburn, man. Like, I, I, <laughs> Listen, I get it. They, tell them, tell them how you hey, feel. hey, not to mention, I don't know what they'll be going for like in a couple of years. Like, I think Gus Malzahn, as far as playing Georgia, Gus Malzahn might have hurt them because this is this guy's first year. He's gonna be still. This is only that's only what like, the sixth game of the year. So we'll be mm-hmm. right in the midst of like you know getting it rolling straight off of. Right. Come on now, they get us after UAB, South Carolina, Vandy, and Arkansas. Like, we done had time to implement plays we didn't even think we was going to implement or nothing. Like, we should be fully rolling in the Auburn game, whether we win or lose to Clemson. Like I said, I see that that Florida-Missouri week, those two weekends is, is like that Missouri, like I said, not because of the talent, but because coming off that high. Like you said, even if we lose to Clemson, we're still going to be in, like, the top three or four. Got their poll come out. Kids are reading their press clipping. They're like, yeah, we the stuff, man. All we got to do is win out, go play Bama or A&M or LSU, whoever in the in the SEC championship. And that's what I'm worried about, that 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 right there. And I hate. I would hate to spoil the season losing to a Missouri. Because we all, since they've been in the SEC, we only lost to them once. People don't even realize that. So. Yeah, true that. And that hurt. <laughs> when we did, but they, 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 they brought the Athens. They brought like some six, four wide, six, five wide receivers. They they was throwing the ball all around on us, dog. <laughs> they did. They had some. They had some real talent on the outside when they did beat us that so, year. So, so we, are you a are you a national championship or bus this year, or are you a are you uh, a playoff or bus? I'm playoff or bus. I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a listen. I'm a natty man. <laughs> Look, I we had conversations about five years ago. Okay. Um, me and a bunch of the guys, you'll know these names: Corey Robinson, C. Rob, Bad Parker, uh, Shouty, um, you know, E. Rob. You know, and James Cornelius, we have a text chat, man. And so we were saying we just want to be relevant every yeah. year. Kirby has done that. We are relevant every single True. year. Um, now we're at the part to where we need to take it to the next level. Really, we should be two ships in, minimum one ship minimum. in. Um, I think that, you know, realistically for us now, every year is natty or bust. Okay. I don't care what we're doing. I don't care who we're replacing. I don't care where we've been. Every year now is national championship or bust. I've experienced the playoffs. I experienced that heat. And I'm appreciative that we are always in the conversation. But I need a natty to get these people off <laughs> our back. <laughs> I need a natty to... Listen, I grew up, I'm telling you, I grew up an Alabama fan, man. I was rabid about it. And I, I'm a true believer in you continue to push until you either break down and fall off the table or you take over. Yeah. And I want us to take over. I want Georgia to be the premier program in the country. But that's it. I have told anybody that we have fell short. Like you said, we should probably be two natties in, if not at least one when we do because we will and it will be under kirby when we do it, the floodgates are going to be open because he already like you mentioned previously he recruits with the savings with the dabbles with if not better sometimes you know what i'm saying 
Right. And like, for instance, this year, I keep up with recruiting a little bit here and there just to see what, what you know, what we, if I like to see all we keep in the Georgia talent in Georgia because that mm -hmm. it's a state rich talent. Uh, so if we doing that, that's fine. But it's a lot of kids, I think, kind of waiting to see, are they going to get over the hump? Can they beat Alabama? If we can beat Alabama, win a natty, it's gonna, I think it's going to be out of control for about five to six years. <laughs> I don't disagree. I don't disagree because Kirby has a culture over there, man. These kids love. Yeah. They, they love going to UGA. They love putting that G on, you know, and it's different. The, the feel is different. It is. It's, it's literally the feeling of when we do, when it happens. Like we know it's going to happen, but when it happens to your point, I mean, you, he's already recruiting ridiculous. Yep. If he can get that net, he can get those little, those little uh, in game gremlins, you know what I'm saying, out. I think that it's going to be extremely wild and a crazy ride for us. And we should kind of rip off a few. Uh, just because it is going to be even more ridiculous. It is. I think so. Well, that was a good coverage of the Georgia 2021 season to come. We appreciate you coming in the fan at it, Jay, giving us your inside knowledge on the game. Hope to have you back again. And for all those out there in YouTube land, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe so we can get more content like this and get more athletes on so they can give us the inside scoop on how it really go down on the field. For Jay, this is Coach I, and we are out. Hey, guys, appreciate you. Thank you. I can't wait to come back and do it again.